Hey everyone, Matt Pasarsik from RazorEmporium.com. Continuing our series, diving into the history of Gillette, moving along, still in the old type era with the Mulaney Decolette. So a lot of people like to think of lady shaving, underarms, legs, as something that's just always been done. But that's just not the case. In fact, Gillette was, was one of the kind of pioneers in getting ladies to want to shave their underarms, shave their legs, kind of to be more ladylike, to be less like their hairy European counterparts in France and wherever else, Spain, and really kind of be more ladylike, be more groomed, more fashionable. In fact, another aspect of their ads were always to tell ladies to combat the smell and the odor and displeasure of having underarm hair or any other, other area of hair that was uncouth or unclean. Um, Gillette even utilized famous uh, celebrities of the day to help promote this idea that uh, you know ladies should be clean and should be uh, prepared and pampered in, in such a way that was pleasing for men and I guess other women. But all those kind of cultural notes aside, the Milady Decolette set, uh, in terms of sales and in terms of you know business, was a way of Gillette getting another razor on the shelf, which took up more shelf space from their competitors but also sold now more blades to other consumers. They were missing half the market. If you can get someone to now shave an area of their body that they weren't shaving before, you have a whole other uh, stream of revenue for people to buy those safety razor blades, which is where Gillette always made their money. So here we have the, the 1950 Ducalette set. Now you'll notice the head is the exact same old type style head characterized by the, the curved guard open comb tooth design and the stabilizer pins underneath the head. It's also going to feature a serial number on the guard right here with a letter code and a number code in production. So you can use our chart at www.gillettedatecodes.com to decipher that code and figure out the exact year in production. The one distinguishing feature, however, is this handle with this really kind of fluted, very feminine looking um, kind of neck to it. Beautiful, beautiful design. This was offered originally in gold plating and was put up in a um, kind of a French ivory, which is a fancy way of saying injection molded plastic or, uh, you know, um, case, tr presentation case. And this was something that was also kind of marketed. You see here this original advertisement, this beautiful color photo showing the set. And this is something that a lady could slip into her purse like a, a compact. And it kind of played off of the whole idea of the pocket edition, but making it more ladylike, not metallic. Um, and this would be something that was very discreet. You gotta remember, Gillette was inventing women shaving and they weren't used to it. And so women had been using maybe men's razors, so it wasn't looked upon as something that even wanted to admit that you needed to shave. The the you know kind of archetype lady would be someone who didn't need to shave, who was blessed with the genes of no, you know, little hairs on their face, no hair under their arms, no no real hair on their legs to speak of. So she was kind of a a Venus, you know, being born out of the shell, this perfect image of a woman. And the idea of having to use a razor seemed kind of almost unclean in itself. So wanting to be able to hide it away, keeping it discreet was kind of part of the advertising. But Gillette nailed it. And this immediately started a whole new revolution of, of ladies embracing shaving, and it was part of the staple of the rest of their history. Um, but it really started here with the Milady Decolette. And don't forget, this period of time, we're talking about women's suffrage. We're talking about women getting the right to vote. Um, as Susan B. Anthony said, even the bicycle was something that gave her uh, more, more mobility, more freedom in her world. And something like a razor, another piece of technology, also gave that same kind of freedom. Um, you look at the packaging, look at the box, the case, it's beautiful, very, very kind of art deco, art nouveau, um, very in vogue of the time, even the styling. You look at, you know, all this kind of um, paisleys, kind of ser serifs up here on the, on the fonts, and uh, it's the whole idea of the razor was something designed for the elegant lady, for the upper class lady. Um, this set sold for $6 in 1915. Today that'd be like $147 in today's dollars. So this was definitely something that 
not your average lady could afford. This was the lady who was taking ballroom classes, who was going out and dancing and maybe kind of part of high society. So this razor wasn't quite down to the level of, of the big disposable where anyone could pick one up. Uh, very kind of the, the upper middle class would be buying this razor. But again, Gillette now had convinced the entire other 50% of the population to buy razor blades. They got more shelf space and they had this wonderful, wonderfully successful line of razors um, that kind of continued their, their um, domination of the safety razor market, their prowess, that they were the safety razor brand of America. So there is one other variation of this uh, lady kind of style razor that came out a little bit later in the early 20s, the moment the new improved era hit and the old type era was over. Gillette was selling their old type uh, ball end razors as brownie sets, as we've talked about before. But they also now had the lady version, which was called the Lady Parisian. Kind of a stubby ball end, a shorter handle. It's got the ball end on it. Um, and it was in a cardboard box, kind of a cheap version of the decollette. Not as fancy, not as nice, but still kind of a razor now just to sell, to get blade sales along with it. Um, don't forget that this whole era of, of Gillette razors, you know, they wanted la ladies' razors to kind of be miniature, kind of small. We have other brands like Cutie, other things on the market like Curfit, tiny handles. It wasn't until later that Gillette got, you know, smart, maybe actually listened to women, and put razor handles on there that gave them more length, uh, more ability to get to hard to reach places, and not these kind of stubby, small little handles. So in terms of rarity on this guy, if you find just the razor alone, I would say it's maybe a little bit more rare than let's say the common ball end old type. Um, but what really makes this set is the case. The common thing that always happens with these cases is this, this back hinge is broken. Now they did have different colors of inserts. This one has a pink background. They also had green. I think they even had a blue. I could be mistaken, but I know there's at least a couple colors for the background interior colors. Uh, but you always see this back hinge broken. So this is definitely a feature to look for. And the shipper, now I, I, uh, this is a shipper that I got locally um, at, a, at a swap mart, believe it or not, and it's actually in pretty rough condition. But even in the condition it's in, it's still better than no shipper. So uh, I would say the rarity of the set just by itself, of uh, just the razor, you know, maybe a, a two, uh, two and a half out of five, where one is you could find it at a thrift store, five, it belongs in a museum. But the moment you add the presentation case, the moment you add a shipper, it's gonna get up there. I would say this was, this was now uh, on par with maybe a, a really nice single ring set, um, you know, four, four and a half even out of five. Definitely something harder to find with all the matching pieces and the, and the correct um, components. If you have it with matching serial number, which I don't think mine is, no. Well, excuse me, I'm 100% wrong. I didn't. Even, I forgot about this. My serial number is M three two eight five one, and my box does say M three two eight five one. So I do have a matching shipper and a matching case, which I completely forgot I had that. Pretty cool. Um, so that does add some uh, historical context that this set has always been in this box for the last 103 years. And in it goes again. And that concludes our talk on the Milady Decolette, uh, also known sometimes as the Milady Parisian. But whatever you want to call it, it's here to stay. It's ladies shaving. And it's all part of the Razor Archive series here at Razor Emporium. Stay tuned for more episodes. Click that notification bell for knowing when we come out with new videos. Like, comment, subscribe. Let us know what you think about ladies shaving. Do you think ladies even should be shaving? What should they be shaving with? Let us know below. We'll see you soon, guys. Thanks so much for watching.